Can AI make it easier to build flows in Power Automate? Stick around and we'll find out. AI seems to be making its way in everything these days, hopefully to make our lives a bit easier. And that's no exception with Power Automate. Now, if you stay up to date on the Power Automate blogs, you might have noticed two new features that were added recently in preview. The first is the describe it to design it functionality. That's located here on the create tab in the Power Automate portal. So you'll have a new option here to describe it to design it, meaning that we can actually use natural language and pass that into Power Automate to tell it what we want to automate and it will build the flow for us. And this is actually using the same GPT functionality that we've used in Power Apps ideas and that's making its waves all over the internet right now. Now, the other functionality you might have noticed as well, if you were in the edit mode in one of your flows and you ever click on this expression tab here, you might have noticed this new option at the top here to format data by examples. This is also additional AI power technology for us to use that same technology to help us write these expressions. Now, to me, this is one of the trickiest parts of Power Automate is actually knowing the ins and outs of the expression language. So this piece right here could really help out a lot of people. And I think both of these features can be beneficial, regardless if you've been using Power Automate for years and you know the ins and outs of it, or if you are a beginner. There's something in each of these tools that can help us all. Now let's start with the You Describe It, AI Builds It functionality. To get started with this, you'll click the Create tab in the Power Automate portal. And here you'll see the option for Describe It to Design It. So to get started, let's select this Describe It to Design It option, and we'll select the Try It button here. And all we have to do again is just type in natural language, how we would describe this to a person that we were talking to, what we want. Now, before we put in something here that we wanna do, we gotta keep in mind that this is a preview feature at the moment. So pay attention here to the left-hand side. It will tell you what specific actions that this currently supports. So it's going to support approvals, stuff in Dataverse, Excel forms, Teams, Outlook, OneDrive, Planner and SharePoint. Support for more actions will come soon once this is out of preview, but keep in mind, this is kind of the confines of what you're trying to keep into for now. But hopefully you'll see the value of this functionality here. So let's describe the flow we want. So what I want is to be able to take my attachments that I receive in an email and save those to my OneDrive. So I might say in natural language here, take email attachments, and you see, as soon as I start typing things, it's kind of knowing some things that you might ask. So it's going to say, save Outlook attachments I received to OneDrive. So it actually already knows what I'm wanting and I can simply select the option. Now it might not always have that, so you can continue filling out and describing your flow, but in this case, it actually is suggesting exactly what I need. So I'm just gonna click that and it's going to generate the suggestion for me. So this is kind of initially bypassing that traditional edit flow experience that we see, and it's just asking us to fill in some properties. So it's going to suggest a flow with a trigger of when a new email arrives in Outlook, and then it's going to add these two actions, a for each to be able to loop through if there's multiple attachments, and then a create file in OneDrive action to actually go and add that file inside of OneDrive. So I can confirm here if this is what I think I was wanting. And if it looks good, I can simply click next. Then it needs to authenticate into those different services. So it's going to make sure that I have connections to those connectors, which I already do have. But if I didn't, I would have to authenticate into those right here. So now I can click next. And now it's just guiding me through the process. So instead of having to go into the individual actions and in Power Automate, it's giving me a little bit more user-friendly experience where I can select the OneDrive folder path that I wanna add these to. So I can click on the folder icon and kind of explore the different folders that I have in here. So I actually have one already for attachments and that's where I want those to go. So I'll select that. And then for the file name, now that might be something that I wanna pull in dynamic information from. So I might put something temporarily in here and then change it after the fact, after it's done creating this flow for me. And then the same thing for the file content. So like right now it's not intuitive enough to know that I need to dynamically get this information. So we'll just leave that blank for now and we'll have it create the flow and then we can fill in those gaps later. So now that we did that, we have our trigger and now in the for each, I'm able to fill in these missing gaps here. So the file content, now we can leverage the dynamic content and map that to our attachments content 
And then for the file name, we can also remove that boilerplate thing and we can pull in the attachment name field. Now, as you can see, this really saved us quite a bit of time. Some of you that are very experienced with Power Automate might know that there's already a template that does this for us. But honestly, personally, I feel like this is faster than going and finding a template to use. And of course, this will be especially helpful to someone that's brand new to Power Automate and isn't sure where to start. Now, I'm a big fan of this functionality, but it is in preview. Uh, and with that, of course, there's gonna be some things that I just can't do. There's gonna be a level of complexity that I can't handle. I suspect as time goes on, that will get better, but we're always going to need people that have those Power Automate skills that can build from scratch these workflows to kind of bridge the gap in some of the more complex scenarios. Let's just kind of see if we can push the boundaries a little bit on the describe it to design it functionality. Let's do something a little bit more complex. So in SharePoint, I have a list of these desk reservations. Perhaps I want some kind of process where every day in the morning, it sends me a list of all the reservations for that day. Let's see if this AI can handle a scenario like that. So we might type in here, send me an email every day at 9 a.m. with the list of upcoming SharePoint items because it's not able to know about a specific SharePoint list in your environment, but it does know about the connectors. So let's see if it's able to handle something like that. All right, so that's an example of where it's just not able to understand or doesn't have the functionality to build something. So just doing this to show you that it's not going to be able to handle all of your complex needs. But if you needed something like send me daily reminders, you see it does have some suggestions pop up like send an email reminder every week. So I could do something like this where it gives me half of the way there and then I can fill in the blanks with pulling in the SharePoint items that I need. So it looks like this isn't taking our jobs quite yet in some of these more complex Power Automate scenarios. Now let's take a look at that other AI capability that I mentioned to be able to help us write expressions. So let's just use this same workflow that we were looking at that takes attachments and moves those into OneDrive. So maybe we wanna do something as simple as on our file name here, append the date to the file name. Now maybe we want the date in a very specific format. That's like the first thing that comes to mind because it's a very common scenario to be able to format a date time a certain way using an expression. Now, if you know that already and you know how to do that, you might go in here and click on the expression tab and start typing what you need. But what if you don't know the exact expression that you need? Well, that's where this format data by examples option that you'll see now inside of the expression tab comes into play. So rather than having to go look up or know what expression to write here, we can do format data by examples. And it's going to list all the different properties that we have. So you're gonna tell it what property you're trying to format. So in my, when a new email arrives, I wanna format and get that received date time. So we'll select that property. So now it knows this is the data that we're trying to manipulate. And then I simply have to enter in the example value. So I'll paste in an example of how the data would come in. So in this case, it's kind of a long form date here and date time. And then I just tell it what I want the actual output to be. So I don't care about the time here, just the date. So maybe I simply want it to get 117 2023 out of all that. Now, based on these inputs, me saying here's how the data comes in and here's how I would like it to come out, I can generate an expression. So now all I have to do is here's my suggested expression. And now the really cool thing here is it has built-in testing. So I can take this sample value and we'll tweak it slightly just to make sure that it's a little bit different here. So maybe I'll change this to Thursday and select test. And we see it gets the date. And again, if I change this to a different date like the 15th, there you go. It looks like it's getting the correct date. So now I can be assured that that expression is working correctly how I want it. And if I want to use it, all I have to do is click apply. And it's just giving me a warning here, letting me know that it's applying this expression. And once it's applied, you can't go back and use this. You'll have to edit it in the expression editor. And this can be used for a variety of examples, not just date time. So if we go back to expression here and format by data, another example might be on the from. So maybe I wanna do something like extract the domain of an email address. So I can put in an example here, like testuser at gmail.com and the desired output would just be Gmail. 
And another thing you'll notice here is you can add multiple examples too. So rather than just a Gmail example, I might do person1 at outlook.com. And then we'll do the desired output as Outlook. And then we'll have that generate the expression for us. And of course, we'll use the testing again, see if it works. Okay, so far so good. Let's test an Outlook one. And then we only gave it examples for Gmail and Outlook. Let's try something else like person at Microsoft.com. See if it can get that. Looks good. And then we'll even try, let's changing the .com to maybe a .org. Same thing. So now we can be sure that that expression gives us what we need. Now I'm pretty sure this right here is my new favorite AI functionality. It significantly reduced the amount of searching that I have to do to remember all of these expressions. Now, if you haven't looked at these two new AI tools in Power Automate yet, go in there and give it a try and let me know what you think. And if you enjoy this content, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. And wait, before you go, check out some of my other Power Automate videos.